Hi everyone. <clears throat> so real quick, um, just about, I think it was two days ago, I was reading in the news that Enzo Pharmaceuticals has been shut. And as soon as I read that, I laughed out loud. I did post it on my Facebook page though, but I laughed out loud. Why? Because I knew and I saw it coming. Like I said in the post that I made on my page, I said, for me, it wasn't a matter of will they do it, it was a matter of when will they do it. Because if you are someone whose brain is still functioning normally, the way God meant it, has made for it to function, you would have noticed if you saw that, I don't know how many of you saw that BBC uh, documentary that was exposing the dangers of uh, codeine abuse, right? In that BBC documentary, did you notice that even though they were saying that many pharmaceutical companies use codeine in their cough syrups and other things, that it was only one pharmaceutical company that was featured in that document. Did you notice that? I did. I noticed it because I'm awake. And as soon as I saw it, the first thing I said was, oh my God, Emzo has been marked for demolition. And was I wrong? You see what is going on right now? Emzo has been shut for investigation and this is how it starts they will tell you that they are shutting it down for investigation and then it doesn't open up again and then they will hound them and they will descend on them by the time they are done with them there will be no single emsor anywhere but let me tell you what is going on because now you see even if we are too powerless we can't do anything we have to talk and let the enemy know that we are aware of what they are doing now, I want to refresh your memory. I want to remind you of that audio that leaked last year. There was an audio that was allegedly, that was leaked. It was allegedly a conversation between two Nigerian governors, the governor of Ogun State and the governor of Borno State, right? In that audio, they were talking about how to completely decimate, destroy, obliterate Igbo businesses in Nigeria, especially in Lagos, in such a way that the Igbos will not have any, they will not take anything home. They will go home empty-handed from Lagos. And then they were discussing also how they can share the huge economic potentials of Lagos, commercial potentials of Lagos amongst themselves, amongst the two regions. This was a discussion that was in that audio. I mean, eventually the two governors came out and said, it wasn't us, we were not the ones who did it. But you know, I have a billion dollar question to ask. Who could they be that made this audio? Because those guys must have been very prophetic. Because everything they outlined in that audio is practically happening. After that audio was released, there has been a remarkable increase, a remarkable spike in the destruction of Igbo businesses in Nigeria. And Lagos has been the hub where they do this more often. Can you imagine? What a sweet coincidence. Now, you may not understand this, but so many people, when this thing started, I made a video last year, okay, in 2017, when I was talking about uh, what they, do, they were doing to innocent. And people were thinking, oh, this, was, this is an overreach. And I just laughed over it. But today, anybody who has been on the sideline thinking that it was just a figment of someone's imagination that Igbo businesses are targeted in Nigeria, I think this is, what, this is your wake-up call right here. You remember Ibeto, right? Ibeto has been messed up. His cement is finished. He's gone. And nobody's talking about it again. There was this other guy again, Erisco, one Igbo guy who started making uh, uh, tomato paste in Nigeria because the government, I think the previous regime, said you should bring your businesses home. Government will support you. Employ labor at home. And let us do everything from home. And the guy brought businesses, employing more than a thousand people, about 1,700 plus. And when this regime, APC regime, came into power, this man began to cry like a goat that was about to be sacrificed for Christmas. I was reading and following him up in the media, reading every report. He was screaming, shouting, the police, the policies are killing my business. They want to kill me. Even at a point, I think there was a point he was even calling Buhari's wife to come and save him. He called everybody he knew, a risk of food, that the guy that used to make Rick Jiko this rich, they left him and the guy, I think he eventually... He ran out of Nigeria. He couldn't make it. He left. What about Innocent? Innocent is a man that Nigeria should hold in high esteem for making Nigeria proud. Indigenously manufactured vehicles that is being sold to Mali, to different countries in Africa. 
No matter what this man has done, shouldn't government protect this man? Why should he be exposed to, to the kind of, 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 of harassment that he's going through today? They are hounding him up till this day. They want to shame him, destroy him, and kick him to the backside of life. What about this young man that I saw recently, aspiring, aspiring billionaire? I think he's called Seahorse Oil. He makes engine oil. The guy was crying out. They just shut down his business in Lagos. And now where are we? We, are, we have come to the junction of Emzo Pharmaceuticals, another Igbo billionaire. How can you prove to us that this is not a witch hunt? Are you telling me and every other intelligent person around the world that Igbos are the only business owners whose businesses have one or two skeletons in their cupboard? Are you telling me that there are businesses in Nigeria that don't have skeletons in the cupboard that should be exposed? How come it's only Igbo businesses that you always find fault in? And whenever the fault is found, those faults always lead to the destruction, not even chastisement, destruction of the business. They want Igbos to remain only in the market and just be market sellers, just buy and sell in the market. They don't want to see any Igbo billionaire. It's a well-calculated attempt to destroy the economic framework of an, an entire nation of people. How can this be a legacy for this government? A government should boast and pride itself in the fact that they came into power when somebody was a millionaire. And as they are leaving power, they left them as billionaires. How can you come to power and people who were up are brought low and you leave that as a legacy? This is one of the most backward, the most primitive nonsense I've ever seen in the 21st century anywhere in the world. Why? And at the end of the day, you tell them that they can't have Biafra. You can't have it both ways. No, no, no. You, 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 you'd want Igbos to, to be destroyed economically. And you're telling them they can't go. It's a, in Igbo land, we have a saying that it's only a tree that hurt that is about to be cut down. And yet he's still standing there. No, we can't stand and allow the Nigerian government destroy Igbo businesses economically. And you still tell them they can't have Biafra. No, you need to go and check yourself into a psychiatric home. It is not possible. It is not possible. Listen, they did this to Israel. We are not the only people that you are doing this to. He did it to Israel. It was so bad on Israel that even as at 1940, there was no country called Israel. But what happened? So let me tell you people that whatever God has written will happen, will always happen. No matter, Israel is controlling the whole Middle East. Is the, They have practically, they have the strongest military in the world today. America is just using name to surpass Israel. They have the strongest military. They are the food basket of the whole Middle East, if not the whole world. Everything that the world thought they had killed in Israel, all of them have bounced back. You are the biggest loser if you continue what you're doing. But you know, I'm making this video not to challenge anybody. I'm doing this video to put you in notice. Those of you who have shut Emzo Parasitum, or rather Emzo Pharmaceuticals down, we put you in notice that we know what is going on, that we know what the plan is. That's why you featured only Emzo in that BBC documentary. You and your colonial masters working to destroy Igbo businesses in Nigeria. But we are aware of it. We put you in notice. Since you said it is for investigation, we are waiting to see how far the investigation will go. How long Emzo will be shut down while you investigate. Since you cannot investigate something about Codeine, that was just a case of an abuse of the end user. You can't investigate it while the business is still going. You must shut it down before investigation. We are watching to see how far this investigation will go before you reopen Amazon. May God bless us all.